Welcome to Manifested Publishers. Hello learners, my name is Stephen Kariongi and uh, we continue with our topic of discussion and we are discussing uh, reversible reactions. As part of the topic, uh, reaction rates and reversible reactions. Uh, during our last lesson, uh, we introduced the factors that affect uh, the position of a chemical equilibrium and we mentioned uh, uh, three factors. One is change in concentration of one of the reactants. Uh, number two, the pressure and also the temperature. And we went also further to say that catalysts do not affect the position of the equilibrium. Now today I would like us to uh, discuss a certain principle that is called the Lee Chatelier's principle. The Lee Chatelier's principle uh, try to explain uh, the factors that affect uh, the equilibrium. And this principle states that when a system is in equilibrium or when a change happens to a system that is in equilibrium, the system adjusts itself to try and oppose that change. So if a change is to happen to a system that is in equilibrium, uh, the system will adjust itself in such a way as to oppose that change. So this principle states that when a change occurs to a system in equilibrium, the system adjusts itself to oppose that change. The system adjusts itself to try and oppose that change. And that's why we say that uh, when you change the concentration of one of the reactants, then the system will adjust itself to try and oppose that change. So if there was one factor that was increasing, the system will shift in such a way that that factor is lowered back to position. And uh, we'll have an example. We have an example here whereby we have uh, chromate six ions and uh, those chromate six ions are yellow in color. When hydrogen ions are added to the ions, the color changes to orange. So now, uh, the ions that we have at the beginning, they are chromate ions, they are yellow in color, and when you add hydrogen ions to those uh, yellow chromate six ions, the color changes to orange, and this is because of the formation of dichromate six ions, which are orange. So we change the sign a bit. So we are saying that, assuming that that system is at equilibrium, so we are saying that uh, the equation above shows a system that is at equilibrium. That is at equilibrium. So we are saying that these ones are chromate ions, which are yellow, and these are dichromate ions, which are orange. 
So it happens that it happens that uh, when hydroxide ions are added to this system that is at equilibrium, what will happen is that uh, the hydrogen ions will be neutralized, will be neutralized by the hydroxide ions. And as a result of that, the equilibrium will shift or the position of the equilibrium will shift towards the, the left. So we are saying that uh, when hydroxide ions OH are added to the above system, they neutralize the hydrogen ions. They neutralize the hydrogen ions or they lower the hydrogen ions, making the equilibrium to shift in the opposite direction, making the equilibrium to shift to the left. So in this case, we are saying that uh, what will happen is the dichromate ions you add hydroxide ions so the dichromate ions were orange so this will shift the equilibrium to the other side so we are saying that the equilibrium uh, will shift uh, towards the will shift towards the left and that's why we are forming more of the yellow products than the orange products so when we add hydroxide ions the color changes towards the yellow but if you add more hydrogen ions or more acidic products the color changes more towards the the orange So these are two, so it's supposed to be like that, two hydrogens, two hydrogens. So we are saying that uh, equally when hydrogen ions are added, the system becomes more acidic the system becomes more acidic and the equilibrium shifts to the right to the right so if you add hydroxide ions it shifts more towards the left if you add more hydrogen ions, it shifts more towards the, the right. So that is what the Lee Chatelier's principle explained, that when a, when a change occurs to a system in equilibrium, the system adjusts itself to oppose that particular change. And that is what is actually happening here. This system is at equilibrium, but when you add more uh, hydroxide ions, the equilibrium shifts towards the left. When you add more hydrogen ions or the solution becomes more acidic, the equilibrium shifts towards the, the right. So factor number two uh, that affects the position of equilibrium uh, is temperature. Temperature also affects the equilibrium and it affects like this we have some reactions that are exothermic the reactions that release out heat 
and we have other reactions that are endothermic, the ones that absorb heat. So if a reaction is exothermic, it means that it requires a lower temperature. And if a reaction is endothermic, that is absorbing heat, it requires a higher temperature. So we can say that uh, exothermic reactions are favored by a lower temperature while higher temperature favors an endothermic reaction favors an endothermic reaction and uh, we'll have an example of a reaction such as uh, eg nitrogen plus hydrogen we had seen it earlier to form ammonia it's an example of a reversible reaction all those are gases so we are told that delta h is equals to negative 92 kilojoules per mole so when the delta h or the heat change is negative that means that this is an exothermic reaction so this is an exothermic reaction but if delta h is positive this is an endothermic reaction so it happens that if this is an exothermic reaction so we are saying that uh, this is an exothermic reaction that means that it will be favored by a lower temperature so if you want to get more yield of ammonia we need a lower temperature but if we have if we provide a higher temperature then we'll favor the backward reaction so we'll get less of ammonia so so just to elaborate that so we are saying that uh, this is an exothermic reaction and therefore it will be favored by a lower temperature but if it was an endothermic reaction, it would be favored by a higher temperature. So we can say that in the above reaction, increase in temperature reduces the yield of ammonia reduces the yield of ammonia as the equilibrium shifts towards the left so the ammonia yield will be reduced when you use a higher temperature so it will shift towards the the left but lower temperature lower temperature will provide a higher yield a higher yield of ammonia a higher yield of ammonia due to the shift of the equilibrium towards the right due to a shift of equilibrium towards the right so we are saying that uh, uh, exothermic reactions are favored by lower temperature and endothermic reactions are favored by a higher temperature So the first question uh, states Lee Chatalia's principle. 
Number two, explain how change in temperature affects A, exothermic reactions, and B, endothermic reactions. So we'll stop there. Until the next time, goodbye.